These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Okay, so um, let's get a, I got a blank piece of paper for your notes and you might want to hold it horizontally. Um, and we're going to make a kind of a, a flowchart of concepts uh, that are related here for waves. So uh, what, what does a wave do? Well, a wave oscillates. A wave is an oscillation in a medium, uh, and it keeps oscillating from crest to trough, and then back again to crest. Do you know what those words mean, crest and trough? So. If this was a wave, this would be what we call a crest. So the high point is the crest. Then this low point down here would be a trough. Uh, and this point here, I guess we could call this an equilibrium point. EQ for equilibrium. That doesn't sound like quite the right name. I'm not quite is sure. It is it a mode? Uh, pardon? Is, that, is it a mode? Is that what a mode or a node? A uh, node. Yeah, it's actually probably best not to call that uh, a node. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll see why later. Okay. So yeah, we just call this. I guess this is a zero displacement point, but I guess yeah, zero displacement or an equilibrium. That's fine. So what would we call this point? Um. Now all the points that are on top uh -huh. are the crests. Okay. So we Uh, so what would this point be? How about here? How about here? Or here? Notice that there's two different types of equilibrium. There's equilibrium when you're going down towards the trough, and there's equilibrium when you're going up towards the crest. So two equilibriums are not necessarily corresponding points on the wave. These are not really corresponding because this is going down towards the trough and this is going up towards the crest. But all the crests are equivalent. When you're at a crest, that's equivalent to what the wave looks like over here. These two crests look exactly the same. And they look exactly the same as this. You can see that the curve through this crest looks exactly like the curve through this crest. And that looks exactly like the curve through this crest. And the curve at this trough looks exactly the same shape as the curve at this trough. So the troughs are all equivalent. But you can see these two equilibrium points, these, don't, these two don't look the same. Here the curve is going up and here it's going down. Are these corresponding? Yeah, because yeah, the curve looks the same, upward sloping at both of those. Uh, are these corresponding? Now, well, yeah, it's yeah. Going up of course, you might be confused because this is, is where we started. But anyway, it's upward sloping here and upward sloping here. So these are corresponding. Uh, how about these? Are these corresponding? Uh, no. No. Okay. So the crests all correspond to each other and the troughs do, but the equilibriums don't necessarily. Okay, now a wave is constantly changing. A wave is constantly changing. So right now, say, here's where the crest is, and here's where the trough is. But if you waited a while, the wave would move so that maybe later,
Maybe later it looks like this. So you can see the wave has kind of moved along. So notice that this point over here, previously this point was in equilibrium. But now that point is up here. Okay? Uh, and previously this point was in equilibrium, but now it's up here. I haven't really drawn this as a very good picture. But anyway, the points move from different places. All right. By the way, that's why we don't want to call this a node. A node is a point that's not moving. A node is a point that's not moving. Well, that's a different type of wave. In a normal wave, all the points are moving. In a normal wave, all the points are moving. Even if you're at equilibrium at one point, you might be a crest or a trough at a different point. Okay, so this wave is constantly moving. All we can ever draw is a snapshot of the wave. We have to keep in mind that the wave will look different a few seconds later. So a, um, a mode or a node? Um, we'll have to get to that later, actually. Yeah. yeah, but a node is a point that's not moving at all. So is that course, today we did stationary waves, so right. um, this is not a stationary wave. That's right. It's constantly moving, so it right. doesn't have a mode or a node. Yeah, a node. A mode is a whole other term. So a mode is just kind of a mathematical term, uh, an index number. So hopefully we'll have time to talk about that today. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this is a traveling wave, not a standing wave. Uh, the wave is actually moving, so there's no nodes. Uh, if we have time, we'll talk about the standing waves. Okay. All right. Now, the key thing to notice is, say, um, we started when this point was at a crest. And then when we took the, nap the next snapshot, it wasn't at a crest anymore. Maybe it was close to equilibrium. But if we waited long enough, this point would get to the crest again, mm -hmm. right? You could kind of think about this as, yeah, if you waited long enough, this would get to the crest again, basically. All right. Um, and that would be considered a cycle. Every time you get back to where you started, that's a cycle. Every time you get back to where you, uh, where you started, that's a cycle, if you get back to the corresponding point. So if a point started at a crest, the time it takes it to get back to a crest is one complete cycle. Or if a point started at a trough, the time it takes back to get back to the trough is a, is a complete cycle. So there's a special name for uh, that time that it takes to go through a cycle, which is called the period. So here we can start our flow chart. I guess the period will go close to the left end. Maybe we'll leave some room here, but we'll call this the period. The symbol for the period is capital T. And remember, what does the period tell us? It tells us how much time it takes to go through one complete cycle. So meters per second? Let's think about that a little bit more. How much time it takes in seconds? Yeah, seconds. It doesn't tell us how fast the wave is moving in this direction, it tells us how much time it takes to get back for a particular point to get back to where it started from uh, in the wave. So a logical unit here would be seconds. And you can see why this is, we use the symbol t here, because t is for time. Normally in the past we've used lowercase t for time. Capital T has a special meaning. Capital T is the time for one complete cycle. So what's the period tell us? The period is the time it takes to go through one complete cycle. So that's an important thing to have in our flow chart here. Now, even though this is the right unit, there's another unit that's also correct that may be more useful. It's also correct to say that the unit is seconds per cycle. We could also say that the unit is seconds per cycle. I think we saw earlier briefly that we talked about radians, and we briefly saw that radians is a kind of disappearing unit. Sometimes the radians kind of disappear from the equation when they're not convenient, while cycles can kind of be thought of that way. The cycle can either be written or not written, depending on what's convenient. So sometimes the book would call it seconds per cycle, and sometimes they just call it seconds. But we get a lot more understanding if we think of this as seconds per cycle. So let's think of this as seconds per cycle. So let's say that we have a period that is five seconds per cycle. How would we interpret that period? What does that tell us about the wave? It takes five seconds to um, return to its original starting point. That's right. Good. Now, here's another way to look at it in terms of the, so it takes uh, five seconds for a point on the wave to get back to where it started in the position of the wave. For example, if you started a crest, mm -hmm. it takes five seconds for this point to get back to the crest. So this point is constantly moving up and down like this, five seconds to get back to here. It helps to put a number on both the top and the bottom of this fraction. 
Well, what's the number that we can insert on the bottom of the fraction without changing the fraction? So what does this tell us? It tells us it takes five seconds to go through one cycle. Well, that's what we kind of already said the period meant. The period tells you how much time it takes to go through one cycle. So this is why it's good to actually think of the units as seconds per cycle, uh, because then if you remember to put a one on the bottom, it helps us, the units kind of define the concept. The units define the concept. It tells us how many seconds in one cycle. So this is a trick that we'll need to use a bunch of times today. If you have a ratio unit, if you have units that have a numerator and a denominator, you can always put a one in the denominator, and that helps you to interpret the unit. So anytime you have units on both the top and the bottom of a fraction, go ahead and write a one on the bottom, and that helps you to interpret what the units mean. Okay, it's easier to interpret five seconds in one cycle than just five seconds per cycle, so we put the one in there. 